Hey, I'm Steve Krentz for Guitar Gathering. Welcome to this lesson on Dust in the Wind. We're gonna, te we're gonna teach you how to play it, at, and but more importantly, the finger pattern that goes along with it, so you can play not only this song, but other songs that incorporate finger patterns like that. Hey, there is a PDF that goes along with this, so please take a moment to download that. The link is in the YouTube description down below. I'm Steve Krentz, coming at you live from uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And so that's what we're going to be learning about tonight is Dust in the Wind. What a phenomenal song. It was, re it was recorded in July of 1977 by Carrie Livgren and uh, Rich Williams. Interesting fact about it is that the two guitars that you hear at the beginning of it was one in standard tuning, and there's also one in Nashville high-strung tuning, which we talked about on a previous lesson a time or two back. So uh, if you're interested in that, check out the lesson we did just before this, and it talks about Nashville high-strung tuning, and I thought that would be a good connection with this lesson right here. Hey, this was recorded, Dust in the Wind was recorded, right here in Nashville, not too far from where I'm sitting right now, at a little studio, Woodland Studios. Uh, the instrumental parts, these guitar parts, were recorded there. The vocals were they added in Los Angeles a little bit later on. So let's go ahead and dive right into the song. There is a, um, a backing track that I found without guitar. You know how tough it is to try and find a Dust in the Wind backing track without guitar? So I did find one. The link for that is in the YouTube description down below. We'll refer to that one a little bit later on. Now, if you've got the PDF, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing, the heartbeat of this whole song is the finger pattern. So let's just take, we're gonna split this lesson up into two parts, and we're gonna take a first few minutes and talk about the finger pattern, because the finger pattern is the pulse, it's the DNA of this whole song. I can teach you the song, but it's not gonna matter if you can't get the finger pattern. Let's take a look at the PDF. All right, open that PDF, take a look at the first page and the, the finger example at the bottom of the first place. Let me play the finger pattern for you, and then we're gonna break it down and I'll show you how you can do it. All right, so here's the opening finger pattern. There you go, there you go, something like that. All right, all of that is the same finger pattern. So let's get going on how that works. First of all, we're gonna break it down into six, or I think five or six different little bite-sized pizzas. Here's the first part. We're just gonna start learning the finger pattern on a C chord. All of the chords in this song, other than one, the D minor seventh, all of the chords use voicings that only go down to the second string. So we don't, we're not using this first string. The only time we use the first string is on the one D minor seventh that occurs a couple of times in the song. Every other chord is gonna be a five string chord, maybe a C, maybe an A minor, a G with a B in the bass. All of these chord forms are written in the PDF. When it gets to a six string form, your thumb is gonna go to the six string. Your other fingers stay on the fourth, third, and second strings. So, but to get us start off with, we're gonna do start with a C chord. So form that C chord. And we're only gonna be using three of our plucking fingers. Our first, or excuse me, our thumb, then our index, which is thumb is notated with a T, index is noca notated with a one, and then your middle finger is notated with a little two. So in the, in the examples that you see there, the little T's, one and two, that's referring to your plucking fingers. So here's the pattern on a C chord. So, so to build this pattern, we're gonna start just with thumb, on that low C, just doing quarter notes like this. Just like that. Pretty easy stuff. Everybody can do that. Take a little next part. Now here's another key part of this pattern. We're gonna alternate between the fifth and the fourth string. So this alternating thumb is something we're gonna come back and forth to. So it doesn't matter what chord you're on, whether it's a C or an A minor, you're always gonna be alternating back and forth. What if it's a sixth string chord? Then I go between the sixth string and the fourth string. So it's either the fifth string and the fourth string, alternating, or the sixth string and the fourth string. Okay, so the first part of it is just getting that alternating bass going with your thumb. Okay, 
flip over the page, take a look at page two. Or actually, no, there's one, I'm sorry, there's one more example at the end of page one. We're gonna add our second finger to do the upper part. So now we've got two different parts going. So we've got this. Now we're gonna add the second finger. He's gonna play on the second string, this C note. So you end up with this. So play that a few times and get that pattern going. This is really similar to, remember when we did our, um, our thumb picking boot camp about uh, four or five months ago? This is real similar to, to that with finger patterns. Now remember this finger pattern stays consistent no matter what um, chord I'm actually on. Now you can change the page. Okay, so take a look at the next page. All right, now what do we have here? This is on, uh, we're gonna add another note. So you have this first and second, the, the thumb is alternating. Now we're gonna add the first finger, he's gonna come in and catch his first note after that second quarter note. So it's gonna be. So I'm hitting this, the C with my middle finger, and then I come back in between these alternating ones and hit that first finger on the G. If I do it real slow, it'd be like this. Remember, great thing about YouTube, you can always go back and change the speed. Just get that lower, that hit that gear button on the lower right hand side, and you can change the speed if it's going too fast for you. Okay, we're almost to the whole finger pattern, but you've got to get this first. All right, let's add one more note, okay? So now we've got the C, we've got the G happening. Now we're gonna add another high C in between these notes, and that's almost the end of the pattern. Okay, so here's that uh, next bar on the top line of page two. So I hit another C, another second string C with my middle finger. Now, don't worry about it being hard. It's hard. So it, it, don't don't think that you're you're gonna you're, if you if you stumble a little bit on it. Oh my goodness, I'm not gonna get it. No, it, it just takes a while. You need, may need to kind of uh, play with it for a couple of days before you get it. But that's the pattern. Thumb in second, then thumb on the alternating E. Then we have our first finger on the G. Then thumb back on the C. And then we have second finger on the high C. And then back to the thumb on the E. So the thumb is still going alternating. you go there you go one last puzzle piece to put in before we have the whole pattern you ready take a look at the next one now on the next line down I have it just we've well, got two measures written there okay this is the, the the last example there on page two and you'll notice it's got two bars the first bar is they're both the same pattern the first bar is it's written out in quarters and eighths the second bar it's written out in sixteenths and and eighths but it just does the pattern twice but l listen carefully it's the same pattern. It's only notated differently. But Steve, it, it looks completely different. Yes, I know. It's just notated differently, but it is the same pattern. So what's that pattern? Take a look at the first one. We have this, and we're gonna add one little uh, first finger G at the end of it. That's the pattern right there. slowed it down there it is nice and slow okay once I get that pattern going it slowly starts to ramp up
okay? And that's the same pattern. Now, I wrote it out in 16th notes in the following bar there. So this, this way, it would be the same pattern, uh, just written out twice. I wanted to teach it to you in quarters and eighths just because it's easier to see. Now, don't panic because it's in 16th. It's the same pattern. It's the same pattern, okay? Don't, don't get all freaked out. It's just, it's just, but Steve, isn't it twice as fast? Well, yes, but you gotta think speed is relative. Okay, if my pulse is this, that would be 16th notes. But if my pulse is this, that's in quarter notes and eighths. Okay, so it just depends. Speed is relative on what's what the pulse is of the thing. So I just wanted to write it on 16th notes because that's what it's gonna look like in the actual song. Now that we've got our finger pattern down, now, it's going to take you a while to get that finger pattern. Let me just be brutally honest with you. If you haven't done anything like that, it's going to take a few days to get that finger pattern down. Don't get frustrated. Do it super slow. You can conquer anything if you go slow enough. If I've learned anything in life, it's that. You can conquer anything if you go slow enough. All right. Let's, now, I'm going to shift into gear like you know that finger pattern. Let's start looking at the song. Turn over to page three. All right. First of all, don't freak out at the first page. This is the pattern written in 16th notes. Now, let me tell you just kind of how I have things notated here. On the first page, we have the intro. The song goes at 93 beats per minute. That's what the original is. Um, and you've got the two guitars, the standard tuning guitar and the high strung guitar on the original recording playing exactly the same line. All right. So, but he's also not just playing that pattern, he's adjusting a note here or there. We did a little uh, lesson uh, several months back called Easy Chord Moves. I, was to, I would encourage you to take a listen to that if you're, if you're interested in making your, your chord accompaniments more um, um, interesting by just moving a finger here or there. And that's exactly what they're doing here. So he, you start out with this. Then I take my first finger off and I play the same pattern. It's the same pattern the entire song with this hand. So don't even worry about the chord. Practice the pattern first. Okay, do you see? You can just practice the pattern. Thumb and two. Thumb moves to the fourth string. Then I hit the first string and you just work on the pattern. Then I get to these chords. I have them notated here. You're going between a C, take your first finger off, you have a C major seventh. Remember, I'm only using the fifth string, the fourth string, third string, and second. I'm not playing the first string. Don't play the first string. Then I add my pinky down to catch this C2, and then C. So everything stays in place other than my first finger coming off and on and my pinky coming off and on. And then I switch to an A. Starts out with my first finger off, then it goes to the pinky on, first finger, and then off. Kerry Livgren, when he uh, initially created this, he had listened to another guitar player that was playing on a finger style, and he was really interested in it. He was working on, I believe it was a, a Fernando Sor classical guitar study, and he wanted to play uh, a kind of a classical sounding uh, finger pattern like that, and so he, he just came up with this little finger exercise for himself as just a finger exercise. <laughs> His wife came by and said, hey, that sounds great. Why don't you put some lyrics to that? And that ended up being the great uh, uh, Dust in the Wind song that you know now. A few months later, uh, it was recorded in July of 1977. A few months later, it was number six on the Billboard charts and was the only gold certified single by the group Kansas in their entire uh, history of the band. All right, so let's take a look at this. We have the C. Take our first finger off. We have the C major seventh. All the tab is down there too. I also wrote the finger notations in with the circled numbers. So that's what the, the, the fretting hand finger notations are. Put your pinky down, the, the fourth finger. And then back to the original C. And then we go to an A minor sort of a tonality, but it starts with this first finger off, A2 sort of a sound. Same pattern, same finger pattern as we've been doing the whole time. Pinky. Back to A minor, uh, first finger off, 
And then this time we go back to C, but we're going to start with the C too. C. Open uh, C major seventh. Pinky down C two. And then two measures of the A minor. Finger off. Pinky down. And then we do the kind of tenths. We talked about tenths in our interval lessons. A and a C. Second finger and fourth finger. A G and a, uh, excuse me, a G with a B in the bass, which is a B and a D. We break the pattern right there, and then we go into the first section. <clears throat> so if I play that Dust in the Wind intro really slow, here it would be. Two, three, four. Okay, now when you get to um, the verse, I just have it written out in slash notation here because I didn't want to write out all that stuff again. Let me just tell you, it's the same pattern. It's the same pattern. So you're going through now a C, a G with a B in the bass, uh, with the second finger on the on the B, open D, open G, high finger on the D. Remember, we're not doing that first uh, string on any of these chords except for the D minor seventh. Then we go to an A minor. Then I go to a G, sixth string uh, is with the thumb now, and then I have open, open, open on the fourth, third, and second there. D minor seventh, now I switch the entire pattern here from these inside strings to the outside strings. Same pattern. Okay, and then back to the A minor, now I go back to the inside strings, same pattern we've been doing. And then I do my little eighth note, tenths up, then back to the C. D minor, shift up to the upper strings. I get to measure 17, the chorus, same pattern. I'm gonna do a D with an F sharp at the bass. Now, let me give you a professional tip here. Use your second finger. Second finger, third finger, pinky. But Steve, I learned it like this. Great, okay, great. You learn it like this. It's the same notes, whether you use two, three, and four, or one, two, three, but a lot of inexperienced players will play it like this. And then when they actually get to playing things, in 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 the key of G or in the key of D or in the in this case it's it's a, in the key of C but it's a secondary dominant right there um, you you find it hard to jump to the next chord ah that's why we do the two three and four fingering on that little pro tip for you there then I go to a G measure eighteen the A minor. Then I put my pinky, keep that A minor down, put that pinky down on the G. And then I go back to my D with the F sharp, a second finger on the lowest tone. Back to the G. Back to the A minor. Then I do a quarter note here on the G with the B in the bass. And then I'm back to, it repeats back to the verse, the top of the page. So if I played all of that verse section really slow, it's going to be.
beat that back. Okay, when you get to the second ending, when you come around that uh, time again and you get to measure, uh, what is that, uh, measure 21, now we kind of start this little interlude on the song. This is where it goes to the to the strings and the violins and all of that beautiful stuff there. What the guitar, let's focus on what the guitar player is doing. Okay, so what the guitarist is doing is a couple of different voicings. Now, what's happening with the finger pattern? It's the same, it's the same finger pattern. Rich uh, Williams, the fellow that played guitar all, along with Carrie uh, Livgren on this, said this was the first finger style piece he ever did and he only knew one pattern. It's that, it's all the same pattern, okay? Some fascinating interviews with him. If you wanna go on to YouTube and type in Dust in the Wind interview and you'll see some, the guys that actually played it. Um, and it was really funny that they played it right here in Nashville, so. Um, all right. Take a look at measure 21. What's the chords there? Let's just look at the chord shapes. I'm going to go up here to the fifth fret and I'm going to put my third finger on the fourth string at the seventh fret. First finger on the third string at the fifth fret and then everything else is open. So I'm playing the fifth string, fourth string, third string, and second string. Okay, so that's the A minor. You know, add two, add nine. Doesn't really have the flatted seventh in there. It's just kind of the first, third, second, and fifth. Then it goes to a G with an A in the bass, but hey, look what happens here. Remember, a guitar player thought of this. So it's not, there's a lot of finger combinations. So instead of being third and first, now I'm just gonna switch them, first and third. So now my first finger is on the fourth string at the fifth fret. My third finger is on the third string at the, at the seventh fret. Do you see what happened there? I just switched, I just switched like that. So this is the next chord. Same pattern. Now take this pattern here, slide it down two frets. So now I've got the open A still, first finger on the F on the fourth string, third fret. Um, what do we have there? Third string, third fret, third finger, and then still have that open there. It's kind of a dissonant, flatted five, sharp 11 sort of a sound. Okay, and then we slip into a um, F sixth, so they add the D in there. So maybe you just have to switch your fingers around. I think on their recording, they didn't switch the fingers around. They just put the second finger there, but that's a little bit of a stretch for some folks. So I might just add my second finger down here to the second string and catch that D. This is the F6 with the A in the bass, and then take that off. So those four chords again are this one. Then I switch my fingers around. Then I switch it down two frets. I add the second finger on the second string, D, and then take it off. So if I add that with my pattern, and then I play that again. I play that pattern actually three times on the recording. One time it's just instrumental, then after that the strings come in with all of the uh, wonderful violin lines there. So that's what's happening on the interlude. Let me play that for you one more time. If you go super slow, it's still the same pattern, but I'm doing these chords with it. just the last measure there's two beats for each of those so there you go okay after you do that three times then you get into all this beautiful lines with the violin and it turns back major again so we've been in a minor so do you see how we're switching between c major and a minor the relative major the relative minor they're going back and forth remember those two keys share the same key signature in this case no sharps or flats so they're sometimes they're in c sometimes they're in a minor now we switch to the C, and we go, I have, I have the chords written out there. It's the same line as the intro. It's exactly the same line as the intro, so it's the exact same chords as the intro. So I just didn't write it all out there because it'd be too confusing. I just put the chords. So it's the same chords as the intro. Top of the next page, it goes back just like the intro. Here's the 
hear the, the, the lyrics come back in. And then they're back to the don't hang on part, okay? Now we're back to the verse doing the same pattern. Here it switches to the upper strings. Then back to the A minor and the middle strings. The little tense there make those nice and short. Measure 21, we get to the chorus, the dust and the wind, the lyrics. We go to the D with the F sharp. This is exactly how it was before. Now it just repeats that chorus. kind of go to this little outro which sounds like the intro except we're just going to keep it in that A minor and it just keeps cycling that around three or four times until in the original recording it just fades out so that is Dust in the Wind. Now on the recording it's going at a pretty good clip. Uh, uh, what is that? What did I have written there? 93? So it's going at a pretty good clip there. Here's the things to, to work on. The finger pattern. Get the finger pattern first. So where you can play that finger pattern without hesitating. You try different chords with it. Don't just learn dust in the wind. Here's the thing. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't waste your learning. If you learn one thing, learn how you can apply it in 10 different places. That's the real magic. Not just learning one lick for one song. If I can do that finger pattern here, then I can do that finger pattern with a thousand other things. What if I did upper strings? Combine with that with some other stuff, maybe some hammer-ons. Just sit, just sit in your room and play around with moving one finger around and trying to do that pattern, moving one finger around. You'll be amazed at the creativity that can come out of you by just exploring on your instrument in that way. Okay, so there you go. We've talked about the finger pattern. We've talked about how the chord voicings are only on the middle strings. Sometimes it goes to the sixth string. And the only time you ever play that first string is on the D minor chord. All the chords in the interlude, some different, different chord shapes, but the same finger pattern. There you go for all of that. Woo! And that is the song. So there you go. That's Dust in the Wind. Now, before I let you loose into the real world, we're going to turn on a track. And I'm going to try and play through the whole thing. Now, the link for this backing track, this is just something I found on YouTube. Um, it is, uh, uh, it's hard to find a guitar track for, uh, for uh, a song without the guitar. So since it's such a guitar-oriented song. But I did find one of them. So not the best track in the world. But it does, it does illustrate what we're going to talk about. So here we go. We're going to turn the track on. And I'm going to play through, try and play through uh, the entire song. You can play along with me. Um, and then the track is also in the YouTube description down below. Here we go. So let's get that track going. Ready, go.
So that's the that's the song, and then on the on the recording it just fades out there. Woo! So there you go. There's dust in the wind. Hey, if you like these song lessons, we also did another one a while back on um, Brown Eyed Girl. So check it out. Don't get discouraged if you can't play it the first time. Of course, you're not going to be able to play it the first time. It's going to take a little while, but you can get it. Hey, I'm Steve Krentz for Guitar Gathering. Keep up the great work in your learning. Learn all you can, and we'll see you next time.